as I said, it depends what you're looking for with the scale, how you want the notes to be, whether you're going to slide into them and you have a slight, you take a slight inaccuracy because of your slants, or whether you want them spot on. And also, <coughs> depends on the speed that you're playing as to what inversion you use, how you use the inversions for your scale. If you're playing fast, you will tend to use the slant on the first two steps. Right? If you're playing slower, you'll be more accurate to go slightly different tonality, but also it's in tune because it's straight bar. So on a slower number, you would play your D scale instead of going up to, slant, slant, then straight. That would be a normal D scale, right? You can play your D scale by going straight up to the subdominant position. So D, subdominant of, of D is the G chord. So you go to the, where the G chord is and you drop down a couple of strings. So you start with the first harmony, and you drop down to your third and sixth string, up two frets, down two, an upper string, up two, down two, an upper string, and then your final D there. Or you could practice that one, which you know about, the Jerry Bird trick. So. The basics are, once we go below E flat, we can't go like that for our first three notes of the scale. So D would be, or, there is a difference in the tonality slightly if you listen. top note and the bottom note yeah. there's a slight difference that's more in tune with the straight bar there is a difference in the tone as well though this one there there's no change in the tonality of the of the top note and bottom note whereas this way you can definitely hear the bottom note and top note to change that's how you can tell what position people are playing in right so that's your D scale the um, the D flat, which you rarely use, is there again. Now, the other thing that you'll notice when you're playing the D scale, there, marker space, marker space. Funnily enough. So we go to the space and the space, then we've got two markers and two markers, two markers again. That's what fret marks are about because we go down the fret. Now, what have we got? Marker, marker. Space, space. It lays itself out as a plan. They're not there for, for any other reason than that. They're the map. So when you're at E flat, the first three positions is the three markers and then the two gaps. And we're dealing with two, two, then one, two, 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 and effectively one. And that's the note that's the notes of a scale in semitones. Two, two, one, two, two. One. So that is the notes of a scale. So we've got two, 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 one, two, 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 one. It doesn't matter where you are. Mm -hmm. You can apply that rule and then once you realize that, ah, it's numbers. In that case, if I want to play the scale of E, I don't really have to think, do I? It's just two, 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 one. So I go E, and then one, and then two, and then two, and then two, and then, two, and then one. And that's my scale of E, my scale of F. We're back to markers again this way. That way was gaps. This way is markers. 
and it lays itself out as a perfect plan. There you go. Or, either way, that's our scale in major sixth harmonies, the nice broad harmonies. The major third harmonies are a little bit different in some respects. That um, if you start off with the tonic, and the, that's the root note, and the major third under it, right? It actually indicates the subdominant chord, it doesn't indicate the key we're in. To indicate the key we're in, we really need the fifth. So if we're talking about E flat, for instance, we need that B flat note under. We, here's E flat, right? If we had the, if we have the C under it, which is a major third interval, Unfortunately, it indicates that chord. Partials, two notes, and sometimes three notes can be partials. They don't indicate the full chord, but they do indicate a chord. And unfortunately, those two together indicate the subdominant, and we're trying to play E flat scale. Not so we need to start off with the E flat and its fifth. You with me so far? So it needs to be... Now we can go in major thirds, harmony. And the last one... Now it's got to resolve. Right? Can you hear the difference? The last one left us hanging in mid-air. Hold on a second, that's not finished. There's something missing. Yeah, the resolution. The root and the fifth. So it starts root and fifth. You can go as long as you. <laughs> and if you notice again, it's all in twos and ones. That major, 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 major third harmony actually is not a major third at the beginning there, right? The fifth to the root actually is a fourth. Major fourth interval. Okay, you can start. Uh, if you're going fast enough, but to do a scale slowly would. Be it's also very good to practice doing that what I just did, which is to sort of, rather than play the notes straight, play them split apart. And also, that is thumb and first finger, which is the normal way of playing those harmonies. You can practice playing using your first and second fingers. When you practice it like that, then you can get smart <coughs> and play it in chords. So you can play the whole scale, instead of just major sixths or major thirds, we'll play the scale in chords. The next chord, the reverse slant. Yeah. Right? But it's a split slant. That's a tricky one. Okay. Two strings at the same fret, miss a string, and then the next string is down a fret. Right? And that's the way this, the a scale in chords would go. Now we're extending our knowledge of scales, because now we figure out, okay, right, so these are the chords that underline a scale. That's great to know. Because when I'm doing a bit of improvisation, I know that if I'm in the key of E flat and I play a little bit around the B flat seventh chord, as long as I resolve it by the end of the bar or the next bar with a bit of the E flat chord, doesn't matter what notes I play, I'm going to be sort of improvising. And this is how improvisations are worked out. Yeah. 
that's in E flat, but part of that was actually on B flat. The band didn't play it because it's passing. Yeah. There are things called passing chords, and they don't necessarily need to be played by the band. And another thing is that the band does not necessarily, or you don't have to necessarily play the chord the band plays. Uh, as an example, it can get very complicated, but I'll show you how complicated it can be. If we were in the key of C, and a, a, a G eleventh chord is required, nobody needs to play the G eleven. If you've got a bass player playing a G note, and you've got the rhythm section playing an F chord, you have a G eleven chord. Because sometimes chords are made up by the number of people that are playing, and that's what an orchestra does. Right? <laughs> You can take an orchestration to pieces and say, well, they're only playing a bit of that chord here, but these people are filling in the gap. And that's what happens with good bass players. And that's what happens when we get what's called extended chords, a five over a four, which you'll see a five and then over a four, and maybe a slash for the bass note to be a five, and everybody else plays a four chord. That actually is an eleventh. Because if we play, if we all play the chord of F, and the bass player plays a, a G, Technically, that's a G11 chord. You can add up the notes, it's quite straightforward. Uh, the 11th note of the scale of G is the same as a suspended fourth. It needs the ninth, and it needs a seventh. Okay, so for the chord of G11, we need a ninth, which is A. We need the seventh, which is F. <coughs> right? And we need the 11th, which is, if you go up the scale, that's the same as a four. Right? Which is... A C. So we've got A, F and C. And the bass player playing a G. But the notes of A, F and C on their own are actually the chord of F. Can it get more complicated? <laughs> right? So there's the chord of F. F. There. That's the chord of F. But if the bass player plays, and we all have those notes, we've got a G11. There it is, the chord of F. Six, even. And the G bass note. And what neck am I playing it on? I'm playing it on my B11th neck, because that's what that's tuned to. An 11th always resolves, never stays like that. Uh, um, it, it actually usually resolves on numbers like sand, for instance, it rubs. It's very good for certain Hawaiian numbers, like sand and mapuana. Uh, 